new songwriters aspire to be the next best songwriter based on songs that they've loved from the past, mainly from the golden age of the music industry when a lot of money was made off of publishing. However, the technological age of things has kind of made this harder as we have producers moving to a more of a beat maker mindset and they don't really understand how to handle the business the right way. At the same time, streaming revenue is actually playing a big part in a divide between songwriters, producers, and publishers. Right, so now we have a money issue going on amidst a quality issue that's happening because what we have is we have a lot of artists writing their records, but they're not particularly songwriters. Every artist is not a songwriter. So we got a big mix up of things happening in the game right now. Whereas our point person who used to write the hit records is slowly starting to say, you know, man, you know, I'm doing it, but I don't know what's really gonna happen with this career. Like I, it might be more successful to me if I become an artist. Here's the thing, songwriters are the fabric of this music industry and they shouldn't be pushed to the wayside in the way that they are now, especially with the declining amounts of revenue that new songs have on the way up, right? So we should really look at this. I've mentioned this several times on this channel, but we really gotta dig in. I'm gonna bring in two clips from the R&B Money podcast, and this episode is with uh, Tank and Money Long. So uh, check out today's episode coming up right here on the Music Money Makeover Show. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham. When I got into the game, first heavy client I was really working with was Key Sweat. And when I and I and as I was coming in, producers' budgets kept dropping and dropping and dropping and dropping. It was like a slippery rope. And as I was coming into the game and as budgets kept dropping, and then the stock market crash of 2008 really happened and that was very tough. It things kept going like this. The 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 threshold to entry of this game became easier, but then there was more people in the mix and things became a lot more difficult. Everybody began to struggle and therefore quality began to be an issue. You get what I'm saying? We lost a lot of musicality in the ages since 2008 up until now. And quite frankly, I know a lot of you all can hear it. Most of that quality has shifted to the independent stream, but a lot of that quality came from the fact that producers knew how to work with songwriters and knew how to craft records and recording artists knew how to be recording artists and entertainers knew how to be entertainers. So we got to dig into this songwriter aspect to understand why a lot of people who are coming in as songwriters and maybe they taking a second guess at it or at least trying to be artists when in fact they're not really artists. They need to play the songwriter role. Anyway, I don't want to I don't want to go on a soapbox here. Let's hop into today's show. So here's what we got to deal with. Songwriters only get paid from publishing revenue you've heard this on the channel before songwriters only get paid from publishing revenue historically and currently okay with publishing revenues being so low how can a songwriter truly make it they don't most writers bow out one to three years after deciding to go professional or can't sustain themselves after the first hit because maybe things get really good and money comes in but this is the first check that they're going to really receive to maybe do some things with, they gotta deal with taxes, they gotta deal with managers fees. They might have to deal with a publishing deal that they got into. You get what I'm saying? But even if you're not in a publishing deal and you get that first hit, depending on how big it is, it's still not enough to keep going. Like the writer's probably gonna be working a full-time job for a minute, you know what I mean? Unless they're just like going for broke with this thing. Some writers do not get a portion of master record revenue. I'm gonna introduce the clip after I read this. Songwriters by custom standards get 0% of the producer royalties, otherwise known as master royalties, even though they produce the record as well. Isn't that funny? Another fact is that songwriters pitch more than producers when it comes to full songs. Look, I've seen this simply because of some of the writers that I've worked with. And I think it depends on the producer because every producer doesn't sell. Now from this podcast that I'm gonna show, I don't think it says it in this clip, but they say producers sell more than the writers do. And I think it just depends on who the writer or the producer is. Because some of my friends who sold more records, for instance, a songwriter by the name of Ink, or you may have heard of Esther Dean, they push records. It's not strictly on them to let the producers sell the records. You get what I'm saying? So when you have a go get them attitude as a songwriter, then you can negotiate in the business parts. But you know, for the most part, they don't get a portion of the royalties, even though they produce the record. Check this out. There's a, the, the part that people really don't know is that the producer, for some odd reason, has the right 
to move your records without the writer's permission. Well, I'll say this. They don't really have the right. They, what they have is the piece, the master, right? Because there's the, the copyright, <laughs> there's the copyright the which is the top line. Mm -hmm. And the writer is not a part of the master. The, the artist master. is. Yeah. So the master is what's being sold. So that's where the power lies. But that's the, the producer. That's what the producer has. The producer but they, has. they don't have permission to take my song. They, you don't. They technically do. Well, if you have... It's the, not morally right. I'll say this. As, as a songwriter, you don't have the nuts to go and tell an A-list artist, yeah, you pay for that beat. I'm taking my song and I'm, I'm doing out. something else with it. You yeah. don't have the nuts to do that because if you do that, you will never get called again. And the peanut is so, so scraps what you're making that you just be happy to get a chicken wing. Now let's talk about some of those scraps that she's talking about. What publishing looks like from 1 million Spotify streams? Roughly 10% of the master payout is for publishing. This is true, right? You can average it, all right? 0 0.0038 cents is the average stream amount. And then we're gonna multiply it by a million streams, which is 3,800 bucks. Now this is all in the master, but we're gonna take our 10% pub revenue off the top, okay? $380 divided by two. Get what I'm saying? So, and this is really, that 10% is really an increase, but if you take the 10% pub revenue from that, you'll end up with about what the publishing revenue is. It's not $380 from the $3,800. It's $380 on top of, but I'm doing it for simple, sim simple math here. Okay, $380 divided by two, that's performance royalty and the mechanical royalty will equal $190 per royalty. Now, if only two people are involved, then they each get $190. That's not a lot. Now, if we multiplied it by 10, we're looking at $1,900, right? So, it, you know, that's for 10 million streams. If we did 100 million streams, we're talking about $19,000. It is very hard for any songwriter to get in the 100 million streams club. If they do, you get what I'm saying? So $19,000 is like, to, to the average writer, it's like, yeah, you know, I wish I could get into the 100 million stream club with an artist, but in many cases, I probably won't. So I'm gonna be working that job. So in that last clip, she stated that the producers don't have a right, and this is really a whole nother, another show. I could do a whole nother show on this, but the producers don't really have the right to actually sell the song. They don't have permission to take my song. They, you don't. It's a custom. The producer agreement, which is in the 60 day record label, which I highly suggest you get, is what actually moves the master. But in that master, there is no clause. The producer is, is putting everything in there together. And there is a clause in there that says that everything that they utilize to produce the record can be sold and packaged up in that master. However, it shouldn't be that way. It, they, the, the, right, the artist who's going to purchase or the label who's going to purchase, I feel, should get permission from the songwriter because technically they are a producer as well. You get what I'm saying? They really are. Songwriters don't get paid an upfront fee customarily because they technically are producers. Now, outside of Nashville, songwriters do not get paid a fee for writing unless they are signed to a major publisher, and that's maybe. So it's a fight to become an in-demand writer. You see what I'm saying? Some perspective here. If you make it to six figure land, you've made it. That means you've really been, you know, really getting down trying to make all these songs happen for yourself to, to get all these placements to even make six figures on records in a 12 month period. If you make it to seven figure land, you're a household name by that time. All right. A regular job has more security than this. And a songwriter seems like a side hustle to most. This is where the vanishing songwriter comes in because it's like, man, I can make more money working a regular job consistently than I could writing this music, which means I've got to put in almost triple or quadruple the amount of work to make money if I'm doing things the standard way and not getting paid any upfront fees or no points or anything like that from the sale of the master. So it's like, there, it's uh, it's almost like it's like it's not even a good deal. It's not a good deal. So not only are artists out here not getting good deals, but writers out here are just not getting good deals. The producer, whether you be a regular producer or a beat maker, has the upper hand in all of this. So 
How can they get paid more? And I've said this on the show before. The writers will want to add more skills to their buckets like recording, engineering, and vocal production because with recording engineering, you can actually get paid the upfront fee or write the invoice to the label to get paid for your time. Vocal production, we're gonna get into a clip in a minute because this is gonna address my next slide and what I was saying earlier, what I wanted to address with the clip. But if you get into vocal production, if the producer is gracious enough, then they can give you a percentage of those producer points because technically you are producing the record, which is also called running the session, which is what a lot of new producers don't know how to do because if a new producer or beat maker gets hooked up with a writer who's been writing with A-list artists or just artists who are hot in our in their used to the environment, a new producer won't know how to run the session and get in there and actually get the work done versus what the artist would be needing. You get what I'm saying? And so that's why you would bring in an experienced writer for that. But in most cases, that writer still doesn't get paid for those services. You get what I'm saying? They only end up with publishing. So how can producers support songwriters? Split your producer's fees and points with them. After all, if there aren't dope lyrics on the track, then what is it? You get what I'm saying? What is, I mean, you gotta have, the producer needs the dope lyrics on the track. It is the job of a producer to come up with a production budget. So include all of your people in a line item sheet each time you sell a song to a label. Take care of your crew. Split your points with them because they are just as much of a producer as you are. I'm gonna keep beating people over the head with this. All my producers, be fair to your writers. Check this clip out. We always talk about how do you make a record? Who is singing the record from top to bottom and making it what it is? Right, and so some producers, some beat makers aren't producers. Mm -hmm. Most, they're, most, aren't. they're beat makers, mm -hmm. right? And then someone like Money Long comes in and takes that beat and turns it into an entire song from top to bottom, where you for line for line with the artist and this. No, do it that way. Make it like this. Ooh, can you drop the beat out and put that here? Okay, yeah. If you could just make the bass do something really crazy right here when we get to the bridge, and now you've pre produced mm -hmm. the song, mm -hmm. which I think more songwriters, as they start coming to the table and sitting down at that front desk, need to be mindful of. Well, I'm just going to speak from my seat, mm -hmm. is that doing all of that and doing all the backgrounds and arranging and vocal producing and the artist leaves all my vocals on and I'm not getting a sound exchange. All these things, right? Yeah. The issue, my issue was that I did not have the support of my co-writers mm. to make sure that when the business goes down, yeah. because they're not calling me, they're calling you, producer. Mm. When the business goes down, you make sure I'm straight. Business affairs, telling me I'm not a producer, even though I produced. Mm. That was my struggle. Like, that happened to me so many times. And the thing is, she's right about that. I've seen, in my experience, producing and engineering, writers write full songs, and even I'll do that. All the vocals will be on there. They won't get the sound exchange LOD because they are the background singer, so they're entitled to it. They won't get the points. I've never done that, but they won't get the points. You know what I'm saying? The first time I saw this, and I, and I bring up Keith, Keith Sweat in the beginning, but that was my initial experience into the game. I was working with an OG. So working with Keith Sweat, he would have writers come in to write songs for him. He would only take off the top line. But all of those backgrounds would stay on there. You get what I'm saying? And, and we would be in there producing these records, recording them, and they would be ready. Done. It wasn't just the and something. And a lot of times the producer wasn't even there. It was the producer came with some tracks. The writers came over. We arranged it. We did all, everything she's saying. We did all that stuff. And then the writers have to leave with scraps and they don't get taken care of which leaves you with a bunch of bitter, disgruntled people or creatives in the music industry. And that's a bit unfair. So the producer can sell the record or sell the track for five, seventy-five hundred, ten thousand, twelve thousand, fifteen thousand dollars $10,000, and not break off his crew, which what ends up happening with that is that you fall out with your writers, your people, because you didn't pay them, you didn't take care of them, all right? So producers, this is something that you gotta be aware of. now. How can songwriters come up quickly? Form a writing team or production team and produce at volume. Strength is in numbers, and when a writing team pitches in together to create more records faster, you begin to win faster and get more opportunities at bigger budgets. Okay? This is true. This is the Master P method. Volume always wins. Everybody that's talking about, I gotta take 10 days to write one song, 
if you're going for a songwriter role, that's not going to cut it because songwriters got to come in that room sometimes, spew a record in 15 minutes and bounce. And I, and I know a lot of you all have seen this happen over and over, and I've seen it in my career over and over and over again. The most records I've ever cut in one week was 40. The most tracks I've ever produced in one year was 350 four, almost a track a day. It just is what it is. You get what I'm saying? So here's what I suggest. Develop a writing team and select the producers that you will write with or accept tracks from if you're a writer. Develop a consistent plan to produce records monthly. Develop a list of artists to target and a list of A&Rs to target until you kind of get in that system, right? Develop a sound better page so you can write some songs on the side for upfront cash. Stay independent of publishers because you can exploit your own services better than they can. That goes back to actually being able to pitch and move the record. I've seen songwriters do it. I'm not gonna say producers already always do it. Cause a lot of times producers will send tracks out and writers will never, I've seen writers will take the tracks, write, and never give the track back to the producer. Cause once they get the beat, the, the uh, beat CD or the beat pack or whatever they're getting, right? I'm showing my age. Songwriters will hold those records and they'll never give them to the producer. You get what I mean? So they can, the songwriter can exploit the record better than the producer can sometimes. So, and the publisher. So learn how to produce vocals and run the recording session. I recommend all writers learn how to actually sit with someone, get the best results out of them so they can become more powerful as a writer or as a vocal producer. Now, as a writer, you're gonna need a business foundation for all of this because if you don't wanna get got when the producer sells, the actual track or the record, or when you are in the hot seat and you have to do the negotiation for the producer contract, you need to know what you're talking about and your business has to be together. So check it out. I made something called a 60 day record label course. If you're not new here, you know what I'm talking about. It's a framework to establish your record label in a perfect 60 day sequence. And even if you're not establishing a record label and you're a writer, this is for your publishing company too. So learn how to set up your LLC and bank account flawlessly because you're gonna need it anyway. And then we want to cut out the publisher, which is the middleman for, for, for now, saving you that 15% in the beginning and collecting your international and domestic royalties directly to your pocket. We're going to do that. I'm going to show you how to do it. It is not hard and it ain't rocket science, but there's a formula and method to it. Okay. And then lastly, you're going to need to know how to read that producer contract. And I'm going to walk you all the way through it. And I'm going to show you as a writer where it's happening, where the transfer of the master is happening, and then how you can get in there with some points. I got you covered on that. Plus, I got you covered with some other stuff in record agreements so you know how those two things attach to each other. All the stuff you see in the right-hand corner is included uh, within this course. It's like 78-some videos in this course. It's over five, six hours of material just for this. I got you covered. Anyway, develop a strategy with me because I know you got questions and I got answers. And if this is your first time watching the show, then please download all the free stuff right below. All right. But anyway, if you make it as an indie writer, you'll achieve financial stability, which is what we want. You'll produce that volume, which leads to increased recognition in the industry, and you'll maintain control over your work and exploit your services more effectively. You'll become more versatile and valuable in the industry, and you'll build valuable relationships, increasing the chances of your work being selected and promoted. You'll earn better upfront cash, providing immediate financial relief and support. It's not going to come without some work. But if you don't work, then you'll struggle financially, making it hard to sustain a living through your craft. You get what I'm saying? You risk remaining obscure and missing out on valuable opportunities in the industry. And you may end up with a loss of creative control by relying solely on publishers or maybe even producers. You get what I'm saying? So we want to be back here. So you got to put in that elbow grease and you got to put in that work. So if you are a songwriter and you embrace some of these strategies to increase the revenue, you really can make it a pretty good career for yourself. If you can put it in your mind to you know, shape the future of music and be that voice for music. If you can say, hey, I'm the guardian of artistic integrity, then I think that you will have power and fuel to go forth and make great records. Now, this is not a this is a topic that I'm not going to step off of because I really do feel that songwriters need their just due and they need to get paid in a way that producers get paid or they need to transfer some rights in a way that producers do instead of you know the beat maker taking the credit for producing a record when they actually don't. 
All right, Music Money Maker. So if you make music, you should always make money. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com. Jump into the 60-day record label course to get that foundation built. Book a call on musicmoneymakeover.com. Download the free stuff below, and I'll see you next time. Peace.